Nothing should ever replace God in our lives. That's what we get from today's readings on this 25th Sunday in ordinary time of year C. We live in a world with much social imbalance where the poor are oppressed by some few rich people who do everything to maintain this unjust societal ill. In most cases, poor people are reduced to commodities that can be bought, sold, or manipulated. This situation does not only end with being rich or being poor, it also has to do with dishonesty. Cheating has become the order of the day. People modify the scales and balances to obtain false results and extort more monies from those buying. Some make use of the business of others in order to win friends for themselves. You hand over your business to a person and that person cheats you and drives you away in order to become rich overnight. These are some of the ills that are expounded by Amos in the first reading and also in our gospel today. What is the solution in such a situation? It's just to turn to God in prayers as recommended by St. Paul's letter to Timothy. That's the first letter to Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1 to 8. We must put God first in our lives and nothing should replace God. In our first reading today, Amos mirrors and exposes our unjust society. Because of the economic injustices, we see how poor people keep on suffering. And Amos makes us understand that the only time when people try to stop cheating will be during the days of worship and they say, let us wait for these days to pass quickly so that we can go on cheating our fellow countrymen. Amos is a prophet of divine judgment and his thought is dominated by the Lord's sovereign nature. Churches, crusades and deliverance increase daily, yet the crime rates and duping keep on escalating. At times, people even use church to cheat people. The message of Amos is so clear. The religious practices and justice issues cannot be separable. If we want to preach justice, we should make sure we are consistent. It is as if Amos is telling us that no matter what you do in church on Sunday, if you are cheating your neighbor on Monday, then you are breaking that covenant relationship with God. Amos' message stands out as one of the most powerful voices ever to challenge hypocrisy and injustice. Religion without justice is an affront to the God of Israel and far from appeasing God can only provoke divine wrath. People are very astute, therefore, in economic matters. Jesus uses the parable of the astute steward to show us how people can use dishonesty to get a more lasting future through friendship. He uses the present world to invest on future relationships, that's the astute servant. In effect, we all ought to have foresight because what we can learn from this is the fact that the astute steward had foresight and had the prudence of planning ahead. So too, in spiritual matters, we can be very prudent and have foresight. The steward, yes, is very dishonest and devious. Jesus does not encourage dishonesty. Jesus praised the steward because of the absolute way of the basic truth, thinking about the future. So in following Christ, we should not forget that we must think about the future. We must invest in our future with God. God wants every, every person to be saved and reach a full nature of the truth. Injustice should not become new gods for us. Wealth should not become new gods for us. 
St. Paul warns us in the second reading, there is only one God, and there is only one mediator between God and mankind, himself a man, Christ Jesus, who sacrificed himself as a ransom for all. Nothing thus should replace God in our lives. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.